Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. I am making gummy bears for cats. So this is what I'm using. I am using a package of Knox gelatin. This is unflavored gelatin. I am using some tuna. This is solid white albacore tuna in water. Very, very important. Make sure the only ingredients in the tuna are tuna and water. This says no salt added. If we look at the ingredients, we can see the ingredients are solid white tuna and water. There's no salt, there's no vegetable broth, and you don't want salt when you're dealing with cats. So um, find a really good uh, tuna, no salt added, only in water. I know Trader Joe's sells it. I think Whole Foods sells a similar tuna where it's only tuna and water, and I also believe Costco does. And the other thing that I'm using is this cute little gummy bear mold. I got this at Michael's. They sell them for around $3. They always have a 50% off coupon usually. And uh, so I got it for around $1.50. And this holds about a quarter cup of liquid in these molds. Uh, so this is what we are going to use. So the first thing that I want to do is open this can of tuna and pour it into this blender cup because what we want to do is we want to blend up this tuna so it's a nice fine puree. Now, if your cats are used to eating canned food, they will probably come running when you open this can, but these cats uh, don't eat canned food most of the time, so they don't come running. We're leaving the liquid in because we do want it to be a nice puree. And again, there's no salt in here. There's no added salt, only whatever the only sodium in here is whatever is naturally occurring in tuna. So the blender that I'm using is a magic bullet. So I am just going to screw the base on and then blend it. This is what it looks like after it has been pureed in the blender. Now my magic bullet um, is old and it does not work very well and I am in desperate need of a new blender which is why this is maybe not as smooth as it should be but uh, this should do the job. So the next thing we are going to do is boil up some water so we can dissolve the gelatin. I just poured about a quarter cup of the boiling water into this small one cup bowl and now what I am going to do is sprinkle the gelatin on top and as I sprinkle it on top what I want to do is whisk it in so I want to whisk whisk and stir whisk and stir whisk and stir because we don't want the gelatin to clump up it will probably clump up a little bit because this is such a small bowl but we want to try to get as much of it blended in as possible because this is what is going to, you know, give the gummy bears their shape. The gelatin is what is going to hold them together. Starting to thicken up a bit. It's not going to get too thick um, until it sets. But right now I just want to make sure like all of it is off the whisk. already thickening up a bit. I don't think we are going to need the full package of gelatin. So I would say right now maybe we use a little more than half of it. But it seems to be it seems to be good right now. I mean we we definitely want the gummy bears to hold together so let's just let's keep going. Let's see if we could add more in. Let's keep going until it doesn't dissolve anymore.
Okay, that looks like it's good. And I would say we used about two thirds of the gelatin packet. The next thing we want to do is mix up this gelatin liquid with the tuna liquid. So we are gonna get another small bowl. This small bowl holds one third cup of liquid and we need about a quarter cup for the mold. So this will be good. It'll give us a little bit of extra. So let's put a bunch of the tuna in here. There we go. The whole bunch of tuna. And then let's pour in some of the gelatin. And then we want to stir this together. All right, so right there, right there we filled it up to the one third cup line. And uh, yeah, this is looking good. It's looking good. I hope the cats like it. The cats love the pureed tuna just on its own. So the question is, will they like it with some gelatin added to it? Okay, that looks good. It's nice and smooth. It's actually nice and smooth now. So I guess the blender did a pretty good job after all. Okay, so. I've put the mold on a plate because the mold is very flexible and we don't want um, everything to fall out of the mold when we move it to the refrigerator. And also what I did was I took some olive oil. I would have used coconut oil, but my coconut oil was in the refrigerator and it was way too hard. Um, so I used a little bit of olive oil to oil these molds so the gummy bears come out easier. Now I'm using this marinating syringe, um, so I just uh, took some of the liquid up into the syringe and we are going to fill the molds this way. It's just easier than pouring it. And there we go. Nice and neat. Works really well. So this is what you do. You basically just put the syringe into the liquid and you fill up the syringe with the gelatin mixture. And then we come over here to our molds and we fill our molds. So the next thing I am going to do is take this plate, put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for several hours. In this case, right now it's about 1.17 p.m. and I'll probably be back here around 7 p.m. So in this case, it will be about six hours, maybe more. It is now about seven hours later and we are going to try to get these gummy bears out of these molds. Uh, they're definitely set. They're nice and firm. We just need to get them out of this mold without them sticking and breaking. Uh, so hopefully that'll work. Usually the longer you keep them in this mold, the easier they are to get out uh, looking really good. So for example, if we kept them in overnight, they would be easier to get out. And if we kept them in like two days, they'd be much easier to get out. So let's try this. I've been stretching these out. See that? See how they pull away from the sides? So at least we know the sides are not going to be stuck. I just don't know how like the bottom is going to be. Okay, let's see. Will they fall right out? No. Okay, no, they don't want to fall right out. So let's do this. Let's see if we can stretch them out. Oh, look. It popped right out. There's the little tuna gummy bear for cats. Look how cute. Okay, let's try to get the others out of the mold. Let's do this. Let's just like stretch the mold out. They say like to really stretch it and push. I feel like I'm giving birth to these little gummy bears. Look how cute that one is. Okay, let's do another one. Stretch and push. I think it definitely helps that the mold was oiled a little bit. See the three perfect gummy bears so far. Let's do this one. Stretch, gently push. And that one came out also. We'll do another one.
And there we go, twins. Let's do another one. There's another gummy bear. And then we'll do this one. There it is, and one more, one more. Okay, and there we have them, eight tuna gummy bears for cats. They really smell like tuna. So let's give one to each cat and see if they like it. Boo is sitting by my feet. I had no idea he was like already ready for a gummy bear. Boo, Boo, you want a gummy bear? Boo, you want a gummy bear? I put a gummy bear on a little plate for Boo. Let's see if he'll eat it. There you go, Boo. Are you going to eat your gummy bear? Eat your gummy bear, Boo. You don't want it? <laughs> I just gave it to Simba. Is Simba going to eat the gummy bear? Simba should eat it. It's tuna. They like tuna. Well, he bit the head off of it. Somebody's really enjoying it. And now he's done. And Stella's looking for one. Stella said, what are you eating? How come I don't have one? I just gave Boo another one. And he's eating it. It must be very chewy. Good boy, Boo. You ate your gummy bear. Did you like it? Boo's eating another gummy bear. I guess he really likes them.
Good boy, Boo. Hello, Stella. You're a pretty girl. You gonna eat your gummy bear? Stella told me she wanted a catnip covered gummy bear. So that's what I did. I took the gummy bear and I rolled it around in some catnip. This is some dried catnip. And this is what I am going to give to Stella. Will Stella eat her catnip gummy bear? It's a catnip covered gummy bear. This is gourmet cat treats at their finest. You gonna eat your gummy bear? Or is she just gonna eat the catnip on top of it? All the other cats are waiting because if she doesn't eat it, they're going to eat it. See? Simba's trying to steal it. Simba's coming in for the steal. You're going to eat it, Stella? You're going to eat your catnip gummy bear? You just want to pose with it. Boo's watching. Boo says, if you're not going to eat that, I'm going to eat that. Stella, are you going to eat your catnip gummy bear? You want that side of it? Oh, she doesn't want me to touch it. Stella said, don't touch my gummy bear. But Stella, if you're not going to eat the gummy bear, what are you going to do with it? You just want to sit next to it and be friends with it? There you go. You could eat it. Yeah, you like it. Now all of a sudden she doesn't like it. Maybe Splash will eat it. He hasn't had one yet. Okay, Splash, you want to eat the gummy bear? There's a little bug on the floor. I can't kill it because Splash is eating right next to it. And that'll spook Splash out. Well, Splash seems to really like this gummy bear. Okay. Okay, yeah, catnip covered gummy bears. That was a hit for Splash. Splash loved that catnip gummy bear. Good job, Splash. Today I am attempting to make some birthday cupcakes for cats. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. In this little magic bullet blender, I have two tablespoons of raw pumpkin seeds and I am going to grind these up in the blender. And here we have the ground pumpkin seeds. So this is going to act like pumpkin seed flour. Pumpkin seeds are very good. They are high in nutrition, they're high in minerals, and they're anti-parasite. So they're really good for cats. Not too much, they should never make up a large portion of a cat's diet, but it's really good to 
add some ground pumpkin seeds to their food every now and then. I've added one large egg to the magic bullet and I am going to blend this also. This is what it looks like after it was blending for about a minute and a half. It's actually quite watery. I am now going to add maybe like half a teaspoon of wheatgrass powder because the cats love cat grass. I just added about a quarter of a teaspoon of this amazing grass, amazing trio. This is barley grass, wheatgrass, and alfalfa. It's basically just like dried cat grass and the cats love cat grass. And I have a can of Trader Joe's solid white albacore tuna in water, no salt added. Very important to get tuna that does not have any salt added. The only ingredients in this tuna are solid white tuna and water. And it's also very important to use tuna that does not have vegetable broth as an ingredient. Tuna companies like to hide chemicals and MSG in vegetable broth. They also add soy so you never want that in your tuna you always want to read the ingredients on tuna and make sure it's only tuna and water or tuna and oil so i am going to add half of this can this is what the batter looks like after the tuna and the cat grass has been blended into it so it's thicker and it's kind of a slightly greenish shade so now i am just going to add a little bit of baking powder. This is how much baking powder I used. Um, I have a measuring spoon for an eighth of a teaspoon and I used half of that. So this would be like 1 16th of a teaspoon. I have a mini muffin tray which I have sprayed with coconut oil. And now I am going to pour the batter into the tray. This is going to make about six cat cupcakes and a half. There wasn't actually enough to fill this. If I would have filled all of these a little bit more, then it would have made um, just six. But it's the first time I am making this recipe. I'm just kind of coming up with it as I'm doing it. And um, we'll see how these bake. I wanted to leave room in each little uh, muffin cup for them to rise. I don't know how much they're going to rise. So that's why I wanted to leave room for that. So Right now I am preheating the oven to 350 degrees and once it is hot, then these are going right in the oven. The cupcakes have been baking for 15 minutes and they look really good and they smell really good. And I think I am going to bake them for like one minute longer. I just want them to get a little bit browner on top. This is what the cupcakes look like after baking for 17 minutes. Now that time is going to vary depending on your oven. Some ovens are faster, some ovens are slower. Um, so just kind of watch and see how they do in your oven. Now what we're going to see now is that they are going to start to deflate because there's really no flour in here we're just using some ground pumpkin seeds as flour and these are basically um, made out of eggs they're almost kind of like souffles so they will kind of deflate to a certain extent so what we see here um, and there is what I'm hoping the level of deflation is this one's deflated, um, this one's starting to, and this one's still holding up pretty good. So that one's deflated. So we'll see what happens and we'll see how these come out. What I want to do is just cool these a little bit uh, for a few minutes in the pan and then pop these out. These will not be served to the cats until they are completely cooled. So what I'm thinking is like right now it's about 9.30 a.m. So I will just let these cool all day and then give these to the cats for their dinner. So that'll probably be about eight or nine hours from now. So right now it has been, I don't know, like eight or nine minutes and this pan is cool to the touch now. So I am going to get a knife and see how these pop out. They are nice and firm on top. I hope they're not too firm for the cats. And then we'll take a look at these. This is what the pan looks like after I got the cupcakes out. So this one stuck 
uh, to the pan uh, pretty badly. Uh, that one stuck a little, these stuck. That did not stick at all, that did not stick at all. So I would say definitely make sure your pan is well greased before making these. These four are the ones that did not stick badly. These are the ones that stuck more. This is the little tiny one. Then this is the one that was kind of puffy on top and it's because it was pretty much hollow inside. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. So these are the four I'll give to the cats. I'll probably give that one to Hydrox and um, these ones I'll just use for experimentation purposes. And I've already tasted a small piece of this. It's kind of like a tuna muffin. That's the best way I could describe it, like a tuna muffin. So these, um, I'm just gonna let them cool all day. I might even put them in the refrigerator later or maybe I'll just put them in some uh, aluminum foil or a plastic container. Let's take a piece of the muffin to Boo. Will Boo eat it? Boo, you gonna eat it? You gonna eat the tuna muffin? You gonna try it? He's licking it. Is he gonna bite it? Look at that. Look at that. So what this tells me is that even if the cats don't like the shape or the um, the fact that it's in one big piece, maybe these would be great homemade cat treats if I made them smaller. Okay, boo. Okay, that's enough for now. That's enough. Simba, you wanna try tuna cupcake? Here. Try the tuna cupcake. Are you going to try it? You want to eat it? Simba's going to eat it too? Remember the ingredients are just eggs, tuna, pumpkin seeds, cat grass, and a little bit of baking powder. Not soda, not baking soda, baking powder. Do you like it? You gonna eat it? What are you gonna to do to it, Simba? I'm making these for your birthday. You and Splash are gonna be three years old. I don't want you eating the whole thing, but you could taste it. You gonna like it? You gonna like it? Okay, all right, give it to me back. I'll give you a little piece here. Yeah, eat that little piece. I give him a little piece. So if I turn these into cat treats, look, I know the cat likes it. I'll give Boo a little piece also. I just gave Boo a little piece of the tuna cupcake. You want to eat it, Boo? Look at that. Boo likes it too. Yay, Boo. I'm two for two. I am two for two with this brand new recipe that I made up today. Good boy, Boo. Stella and Splash are in their beds. So this is what I have left of this cupcake. I'm actually just gonna give them each a little piece and we'll see if they eat it. <laughs> Stella's like all tired, but she's smelling it. Okay, Stella, I'll give you a piece. I just gave a piece to Stella. Is she gonna eat it? No, she jumped out of the bed. You wanna eat it? Stella, this is a birthday cake, come on. You like birthday cake. You don't want it? But Boo liked it. And Simba liked it. Splashes. Going back to the cat bed. Is he eating it? It looks like he's eating it. I have to be honest. These things smell really good. And they do taste good. They're like a savory muffin. I mean, I would eat them. Looks like Splash is eating them. So all the boys really like these. 
The cupcakes have been in the refrigerator all day. It's now 7.30 p.m. and I just took them out of the refrigerator. They are going to sit out for a little while and they will kind of warm up to room temperature. And while they're warming up, I am going to make some icing for them. And here I have a bag of freeze-dried blueberries and here I have a bag of freeze-dried raspberries. And I use both of these in the raw food that I make for the cat. So I'm going to use these to color the icing for the cupcakes. For the icing itself, I am going to be using this Gerber uh, turkey and gravy baby food. It's a little bit on the pink side, um, but we're going to add some red raspberries and or some blue blueberries and that should give it a prettier color. These are the crushed blueberries that were in the bottom of the bag. I basically just took the blueberries out of the bag, poured out the crushed bits, and then I put the blueberries back in the bag so I don't really have to do any crushing here. What I am going to do with this is take some of the turkey baby food, mix it in, and it should make it a nice either blue or purple color. And that's what it looks like after it has been mixed together. It is definitely more on the purple side. It's not like a really bright purple or anything. To me, it looks like blueberry yogurt. If you've ever had blueberry yogurt where you stir the blueberries in, that's what it looks like right now. It's almost like a pastel purple. Here's some of the crushed up raspberries from the bottom of the bag. And I just crushed them up a little bit more between my fingers. And now I am going to mix this together with some of the baby food. This is what the two different frostings look like. The pink is on the left and the purple or blue is on the right. And these are the cupcakes. The cupcakes are slightly green because of the cat grass that's in them. So it's really pretty. It's like pastel colors. It's like pastel green, pastel pink, and pastel purple. The cats are eating their dinner on small paper happy birthday plates. So let's plate these cupcakes. First, they each get a cupcake. I just put some of the pretty icing on each cupcake. So this is the red icing. And this one has the purple icing. But now we need to decorate them a little bit. To decorate these, I have some dry cat food. And this dry cat food comes in different shapes and colors. The cats never eat this kind of dry cat food. So it's going to be a very special treat for them. And I am going to top these cupcakes with this dry cat food like birthday sprinkles, like rainbow sprinkles. Okay, so this cupcake is done and it looks so cute. Oh my gosh. It's a tuna cupcake with raspberry turkey frosting and multicolor crunchies. And here's the other little cupcake. It's a tuna cupcake with blueberry turkey frosting and multicolor crunchies on top and when i say crunchies it just means dry cat food they almost look like little cream puffs but look how cute they are they're so cute and here's another one and then this one has a little bit too much icing on it the icing is kind of dripping down the sides look how cute that is look at that cupcake for cats and here's the purple one this one reminds me of a cream puff and here's the other pink one. And here's Stella. She's been rubbing up against my legs as I've been filming these cupcakes. Okay, Stella, you want a cupcake? The cats are all eating their cupcakes. Boo's pushing his all around. Be nice, Boo. Come back to the side, Boo. There you go. So they've licked off all of the frosting and Stella's biting. Stella's gonna get that cupcake. Oh, look at that. Stella took the cupcake right off the plate. Boo's licking his cupcake. These paper plates are kind of uh, sliding around too much. It's better not to feed these on paper plates. Boo's eating his cupcake. Stella's eating her cupcake. Splash is looking at Splash is going to eat Stella's cupcake. 
Boo's nibbling on his. What's Simba doing? Is he going to eat his? Okay, guys, don't feed these cupcakes on paper plates. The paper plates slide around too much. Stella's really eating her cupcake. Go ahead, Boo. You could eat your cupcake. Simba's going to eat his. Eat that, Boo. Go ahead, eat your cupcake. Simba's licking the frosting off of Splash's cupcake. Stella has Boo's cupcake. Simba's working on his cupcake. I'll give this one to Boo. Come on, Boo. Eat your cupcake, Boo. You like cupcakes. Splash is eating Stella's. She's licking up icing. This is a giant mess, but the cats are enjoying it. Simba's still eating his now. He, they really like the frosting, which is basically just baby food with the little fruit mixed in for color. Simba's working on his cupcake. Simba's going to eat Boo's cupcake. Splash is still eating his. Simba's checking this out. Simba's going to eat what Stella was eating. I just cut it in half for Boo. Might be easier for him. He has teeth issues. Remember, he lost a few teeth. Yeah, now he's eating it. Simba's eating the cupcake on the table. These cats are kind of messy. But I would say they had a very good time at their cupcake party. Right, Simba? You like your cupcake? There is one cupcake left and these cupcakes look a lot like brains. Like I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, it looks like a brain. And I am going to eat this cupcake because everything in it is human grade food. It's just an egg, tuna, pumpkin seeds, wheatgrass powder, and a little bit of baking powder. So that's uh, basically human food. And the frosting is human baby food with some fruit. So I'm going to frost it with the raspberry frosting and I am going to give it a taste. And here we have it. Here's another little cupcake for cats and I am going to taste it. It's really pretty disgusting. Imagine eating a tuna muffin with like turkey puree on top. That's what it tastes like. The raspberry does give it some tanginess. Like this is something I would never want to eat again. The only reason I'm eating this now and finishing it is because I'm really hungry. I have not had dinner yet. I only had a salad for lunch. So yeah, it's real interesting, but I'm glad the cats like it. I just tasted some of the blueberry frosting. I like the blueberry frosting better than the raspberry frosting. I, I, I just think the blueberries go better with turkey than the raspberries do. The raspberries are kind of like really tart and the blueberries are more mild. But both of those are gross, like nasty. I'm making homemade chicken soup for the cats. I have a Trader Joe's organic grill pack. This has two split breasts and four drumsticks. This is their organic chicken, um, and this costs $2.99 a pound, and this is 3.85 pounds of chicken. The total cost on this was $11.51. Um, so the first thing I am going to do with this is I am going to rinse off all of this chicken and then put it in a soup pot and fill the soup pot with water. Here's the chicken in the pot. Now you could use a whole chicken uh, if you want. You could also just use drumsticks or just use wings or just use thighs. The reason I chose this grill pack is because 
Most of the organic chicken was already sold out. Normally I'll get like a whole chicken. They only had like two whole chickens left and I always look for the freshest sell-by date. So this one uh, had a sell-by date that was like the farthest in the future and the other chicken, uh, the sell-by date was much more recent which means it's just been sitting on the shelves longer. So that's why I bought the grill pack. But you could do this with a whole chicken or you could do this with just thighs or just drumsticks or anything. So now I'm going to get some filtered water and um, put that in the pot. I added five quarts of filtered water to the soup pot and I am now going to bring this to a boil. And once it starts heating up, the next thing I'm going to do is start skimming all of the, uh, like this scum that comes up to the surface. So the soup is just coming up to a boil and see all of that stuff floating on top. That's all the scum that needs to be skimmed off. So that's what I'm going to do now. Then I am going to reduce the heat to probably around medium low and this will simmer for let's say about 45 minutes. The soup has been simmering for at least 30 minutes now. So because I'm making this for the cats, I'm really not gonna put much into it. I've decided I'm only going to add like one carrot and one stalk of celery to give it a little bit of flavor and a little bit of extra nutritional value. I added one carrot and one piece of celery and I am going to continue to cook this for probably another 45 minutes or an hour. The soup has been simmering on low for a while and um, I think the total cooking time has been about two hours right now and I just tasted the soup and it is so good like even without any added herbs or anything like that. A lot of times I like to add fresh rosemary or fresh parsley. Um, it gives it an incredible flavor but for the cats I'm not adding that I'm keeping it very simple. And uh, even without anything, it tastes really good. So I am going to shut the heat off and let this cool down. And then I'll put it in some jars in the refrigerator. I might freeze some also. And that way the cats will have some this week and they could have it in the future. And um, what I do is I freeze it in mason jars. But when you freeze it in mason jars, you have to make sure that it is the mason jars with... Um, the straight sides to it. So it's usually the wide mouth mason jars um, because if you uh, use the mason jars that have like the curved uh, edges, like the curved neck, then when it freezes, it'll actually uh, crack the jar. But if it's the straight sided jars, then it freezes without any problems. So I just turn this off. I'm gonna put the lid back on and I'm gonna let it cool. The other thing I'll do later is I'll take the chicken out and then I could um, take all the chicken off the bone and uh, set that aside. I could give it to uh, the inside cats. They don't, they're not really fans of it. Um, I could give it to the outside cats also. Let me show you what the frozen chicken broth looks like. These are the mason jars that I use. Uh, these are one pint jars. They're wide mouth and they have straight sides. And I fill them up to about where my thumb is. Uh, I leave about an inch of uh, headroom because when it freezes it will expand and so yeah so I have several of these in the freezer now um, and there's several in the refrigerator and so this is great. Stella and Boo are turning six years old so for their birthday I am going to bake them a crunchy cake. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. So these are the ingredients that I'm using. I have a wholehearted squeezable puree treat for cats. Obviously you can use a churu or a squeeze up. Um, this is a tuna flavored uh, squeezable puree. I have half a cup of dry cat food. This is some of their favorite cat food. I will be grinding it into a flour. I have one egg and I have one eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. 
The first thing I am going to do is grind up the dry cat food. I'm using this little mini food processor attachment for my immersion blender. You could use a mini food processor, you could use a magic bullet, you could use a blender, a food processor, a coffee grinder, whatever you have that will grind up the dry cat food into a flour. And this is what it looks like when it's done. The next thing I'm going to do is beat the egg. And now I'm going to add the squeeze up. And I'm going to stir that together. Next, I'm going to add the crunchy flour to the egg mixture and stir this together to make a batter. Might need to add some water. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's looking really thick. I just added two tablespoons of water. That might not be enough. The amount of water that you need might vary based upon the dry cat food that you're using. Okay, I'm going to add two more tablespoons. Okay, this looks better. So that was four tablespoons of water that I added. And now I am going to mix in the baking soda. And I'm adding the baking soda to help this rise a little bit. The eggs will act as leavening and the baking soda will also act as leavening. I'm not sure how much it's gonna rise because this is not regular flour that we're using. This is dry cat food and the dry cat food I'm using does not have any grains in it. There's no wheat, soy, or corn in the one I'm using and it has a higher fat percentage and different protein consistency than typical flours that are used in baking. I have a little round baking pan that I just sprayed with some coconut oil. Uh, you can use any kind of all natural non-stick cooking spray that is safe for cats. Coconut oil is safe for cats. And I am going to add my cake batter. It's a really thick cake batter. And I'm just going to push it down. Kind of even out the top of it. So that's what it looks like. I am going to put it in a 350 degree oven and I'm going to cook this until a toothpick inserted inside of it comes out clean. So I'll check it in about 20 minutes. Also baking time might vary depending upon what kind of dry cat food is used. I just let Boo taste a little bit of the raw batter and he really enjoyed it. Just make sure you don't let your cat taste a lot of the raw batter because it has a whole raw egg in it. And while cats are okay eating raw egg yolks, you don't want your cat to eat a whole bunch of raw egg whites. I gave him a little taste, so that's not going to be bad, but you don't want them to have a lot. Look at this. They were holding hands. You guys were holding hands? That's so cute. A father and his son holding hands. That's very nice. I ended up baking the cake for about a half hour. I just took it out of the oven, I checked, 
and a toothpick inserted in the center came out clean. It rose a little bit, not a whole lot. I'm thinking maybe I should have used two eggs instead of one egg, but we'll see what it looks like when I cut into it. First, I'm gonna let it cool. Hey, Boo. Look who came to visit me. What's going on, Boo? Do you smell your cake? Boo says he wants a piece of cake already. You're gonna have to wait, Boo. I just flipped the cake over and onto this plate. So this is what it looks like. That's the bottom. And this is the top. It almost looks like a coffee cake. Um, it has the, the feel of a muffin. Like it feels like it's a muffin. It almost looks like a cupcake and it's still quite warm so i'm going to continue to let this cool then i will probably ice this with one of the squeeze ups and then the cats will have this as their celebration i'll cut it into four pieces for the cats i'm wondering if i should um, you know make a two layer cake cut it in half as two layers i don't know how crumbly this is going to be maybe i'll try that later boo we're not having cake yet we're not having cake yet. It's a few hours later now, and I'm curious to see if I can cut this into two layers. So I'm gonna give it a try. My refrigerator is making ice so it's making a lot of noise in the background. That's what all the noise is. Look how nicely this cut. Look at the inside of the cake. It looks like a real cake. It's actually very moist too. Let's move the cake over to a happy birthday plate. So there's the bottom layer. Let's put some frosting in the middle. I'm gonna go grab one of the squeezable purees. It actually smells good. The, uh, the cake smells pretty good. There's no sugar in it because cats don't eat sugar. There's no butter in it because there's plenty of fat in the crunchies, which is just dry cat food. And there's no milk in it because cats don't eat dairy products. So let's just, let's spread this out. Do we need another one? Maybe I need another one. Okay, so that's like one and a half so far. Okay, I think that's good. Let's put the top of the cake back on. That looks so cute. I'm gonna ice the top of the cake with more of the squeezable puree. Okay, there we go. Let's spread it out. I'll probably need another one. The top is not totally flat. Um, I could have flattened it out if I wanted to like cut it flatter, but I didn't. I'm fine with it being a little bit rounded. I'm gonna add one more of the purees. Once again, you could use a squeeze up or a churu, whatever you have. So this is what it looks like. I am not going to ice the sides. Um, I think it's fine with some icing in the middle and some icing on top. And I think it's so cute, it's really, really cute. 
So for candles, I have a meaty stick, which I am going to cut up into four pieces. I'm going to stick four pieces in. The reason why is because there's four cats, so they'll each get a meaty stick candle. Okay, this cake looks adorable. Now I want to cut it into four pieces so all the cats can have a piece. And I'm actually thinking I should give a piece to Hydrox in Ditto. So I should probably cut this into six pieces. And I should have put six candles on top. First I'll cut it in half. I hope it cuts. So that's what it looks like when it's cut in half. It looks like a real cake. I'm going to cut each half into three pieces. Here are all the pieces of cake. I've decided that I'm going to give the inside cats the pieces with the meaty stick on top because they have more teeth than Hydrox and Ditto. Hydrox and Ditto are missing teeth, so they'll get the pieces without the meaty sticks just because it's easier for them to eat. So these look so good. They look so cute. I really hope the cats like them. Right now, Boo and Stella are both here waiting to try these. Boo, you want a piece of cake? It's your birthday cake. Happy birthday, Boo, I hope you like your birthday cake. Happy birthday, Stella, I hope you like your birthday cake. It smells really good, doesn't it? Meow, 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 meow. Stella and Boo are enjoying their birthday cake. They're licking the icing. I hope they like the cake also. Are Simba and Splash going to eat theirs? Simba's going to check it out. Happy birthday, Boo. Happy birthday, Stella. There you go, Simba. That's your piece. You don't want it? Boo's biting into the cake, he really likes it. Stella's eating her cake also. I'm glad they like the cake. They love crunchies, so I was hoping that they would love the cake. I gave Splash his piece over there. That's where he is. Is he going to eat it? He should eat it. He should like it. Stella's enjoying hers. She's almost done with it. Boo's enjoying his. I'm glad they like it. Meow, 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 meow.
Simba has decided to eat Splash's piece. Splash doesn't like trying anything new, so what I'll do is I'll take the other piece and I'll put it aside for him and he'll eat it later. New things scare Splash. Stella almost finished hers. She left a little bit on her plate. Boo's very happy. He says, this is the best birthday cake he's ever had. I knew he'd like it because out of all the cats, he's the one who really likes crunchies the best. Simba's eating the cake now also. You almost ate the whole thing already. Simba has been biting off such big chunks of the cake that he's having a hard time chewing it in his mouth because they're just too big. Happy birthday, Boo. I hope you liked your cake. Meow, 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 meow. It's 7.20 p.m. and Splash is laying on the bed. So I just gave him his piece of cake. He can eat it if he wants to. That's what the cats had for dinner today, so I hope he eats it. At 7.20 p.m., there's Hydrox. He's hanging out by the back door. He was just taking a bath. I'm going to give him a piece of cake soon, but first I'm going to do the uh, evening cat chores and then the outside cats will get fed. It's 7.25 and look at this. Splash ate his cake. He left part of the bottom layer, but he ate it. I just gave Hydrox and Ditto their pieces of birthday cake. It would be nice if they ate them. Will Ditto try one? Happy birthday, guys. I don't know when your birthday is. So happy birthday. This is for Stella and Boo's birthday, but maybe it's for you guys' birthdays also. Hey, Ditto. Oh, well, maybe he's going to try the cake. Um, he's licking the frosting. I'll leave them with these pieces of cake. And then I'll go put another plate of food together for them. Alright, looks like Ditto is at least trying it. Ditto is really enjoying that piece of cake. It looks like he's finishing that, that whole piece. They finished off both of the pieces of birthday cake. I don't know if Ditto ate both pieces, but both pieces are gone. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. I also have a mold for some gummy mice, so that is what I am going to do with the rest of this liquid. Now I've never made these gummy mice before and do you see these towels? These really narrow towels? I don't know how well those towels are going to fill with liquid and I don't know if the towels are going to get stuck in there or if you know the towels will come out. Sometimes these are hard to take out of the molds so we'll see. And um, another thing I need to do is mix up some more of this this batter or this liquid and uh, we'll see how it goes actually I think it's all supposed to be filled in now that we now that I say this um, it's not just a towel it's like the space between the towel and the mouse is all supposed to be filled in also like this one so I'll be right back
Today the cats are getting gummy mice as a Halloween treat. I already made a video about how to make gummy bears for cats and in that video I used a gummy bear mold and I'll put the link to that video in the description below this video. And this time I used a mold that looks like little mice. Uh, Michael's had this mold in their Halloween baking section so when I saw it I knew it was perfect for the cats and again you could get things there at Michael's for half price because they always have uh, really great coupons. Now these gummy bears have been in the refrigerator for I would say almost like 48 hours so you can see how they've started to pull away from the mold already and I was a bit concerned about these because there is some fine detail in the tails so I am now going to take these out of the mold and let's see what happened will they come out of the mold if I just turn them upside down no they need a bit of squeezing but look see how easy they pop out look they're little mice They're little gummy mice and the tails, the tails are even intact. And that's what they look like. The little gummy mice for cats. And these are really cold because they were in the refrigerator. So I am going to give one to each cat. Let's see if they'll eat them. And uh, if they won't, I'm just gonna let them sit out for a while and get up to room temperature. They don't know what to make of it. They've never seen anything like it before. Boo's licking it. Boo will be the first to try it. They have little fall plates shaped like leaves. Simba went over to Stella's and he's licking hers. Eat your mouse, boo. You like it. He was trying to get a good bite of it. There he goes. He's eating his gummy mouse. And there's no sugar in these gummy mice. The only ingredients are tuna, water, and gelatin. And when you make them, make sure to buy tuna that is only tuna and water, no vegetable broth. It looks like Boo really enjoyed that. Eat yours, Simba. You like it. Is Stella going to eat hers? Nope, she walked away from it. Stella smelled it and walked away. But there goes Boo. Boo's going to eat it. I just gave Simba his gummy mouse here by the cat tower. Eat your gummy mouse.
You know, chew it, Simba, chew it. Keep it on the plate, keep it on the plate. Looks like Simba really likes it. Good job, Simba. You ate your gummy mouse. Splashes downstairs. I just gave him a gummy mouse. He's looking at it. He's walking over to it. Now he's smelling it. He should eat it, he likes it. Splash, eat your gummy mouse, you like it. I moved it over on the rug by him. All the other cats are upstairs right now. Sometimes Splash eats better when he's the only one down here, but he hears them running around. Splash is the most sensitive of all the cats. Splash, eat your gummy mouse. He keeps looking toward the door, expecting them to come, come down the steps. He's thinking about it. He's saying it looks good. Splash, eat your mouse. There he goes. He's still not sure. Splash, you like mice, eat it. He's saying that's not a real mouse. What are you trying to feed me? Yep. Another option for the gummy mice is to cover them in catnip. Basically, I just rolled them around in some dried catnip, and Stella usually really likes them this way. I'm gonna give her one, and I'll give Splash one. There you go, Stella, there's your catnip mouse. You like it. You like it. Eat your catnip mouse, Stella. Boo's standing too close to her. I gave a catnip mouse to Splash also. Splash likes them. I'm wondering if I could actually put catnip in them. I probably could do that. I wonder if the cats would like them better.
Splash really liked that. And Boo sat here and watched the whole thing. Is Splash going to eat the other one? He should eat it. He just ate one. Nope, he's eating the second one also. Sometimes cats think they don't like something when they actually like it. Simba's been sitting there watching Splash also. Good job, Splash. There's one little piece left. Maybe two little pieces left. There you go, get that one and then you're done. Now Stella still does not want to eat her mouse because Stella said, how dare you try to feed me a mouse? I will only eat the finest pâtés. So let's squash up this mouse and see if Stella eats it. And there we have some squashed up gummy mouse. Will Stella eat it? Stella's eating it. It seems that Stella will only eat squashed up gummies. She says, you do not feed mice to the queen. You only feed pate. And there we have it. Gummy mice served three ways. You can serve them plain. You can serve them covered in catnip. Or you can serve them squashed up as a pate. To celebrate Splash and Simba's birthday, the cats are having a special meal today. They are having birthday mice. This is the platter they will be eating on. I could not find any happy birthday platters, but I found this one. It has like colorful swirls around it and this will have to do. Let me show you how to make a raw mouse for cats. Here we have three primal raw nuggets. I'm using three because I'm feeding three cats. And what I am going to do is I am going to shape these nuggets more into like a mouse shape. Okay, basically I just rounded off the edges a little bit. The next thing I am going to do is I am going to take these bench and field treats and I am going to make ears out of these treats. I'm gonna take two treats and stick them into each mouse and they're gonna look like little ears. Okay, so this is what it looks like with two of the treats placed in for ears. The next thing we are going to do is add tails to the mice. I am going to use a meaty stick as a tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the meaty stick in half, and then each half I am going to cut into four long strips, and each strip will be a tail. So here are all of the little mouse tails, and we are going to stick one of these in each mouse. And this is what the mice look like with their ears and tail but I want to put a little nose on them, so I am going to get a crunchy and put a crunchy on each one as a nose. Here is a mouse with uh, ears, nose, and tail. Now these are large crunchies. If I had the smaller crunchies, it would probably be a nicer looking nose, but we can all use our imagination, right? The other thing I want to put on each mouse is a party hat, and they don't sell any party hat shaped cat treats. So I'm just using these freeze-dried raw bites and um, we can use our imagination, right? So here we have little raw mice for the cats and this is going to be their birthday breakfast. So there's one for Stella, one for Splash, and one for Simba. And they should really like these. They're all ready to eat. And today, Splash and Simba are now two years old. They're two years old today. Oh my gosh, where did the last two years go? 
It's been crazy. Okay, guys, happy birthday. Two years ago, Stella gave birth to Splash and Simba, and they were little newborn kittens. Look how far they've come since living in the dirt outside. Okay, the cats are getting three more birthday mice. And this time what I did was I took the freeze-dried nugget, which I'm making little birthday hats out of, and I rolled it around in some of the cat grass powder. So the powdered cat grass on the freeze-dried nuggets makes little green birthday hats. So here we have raw food mice with little green birthday hats. This is Boo's birthday mouse. This is his raw food mouse that he'll be eating for breakfast to celebrate Splash and Simba's second birthday. And I don't have any of the freeze-dried raw bites up here or else I'd put a party hat on it, but now you get an idea of what it looks like without a party hat. And I think it looks like a mouse. I think it's really cute and the cats love it. I mean, this is everything that the cats love. It's the primal raw rabbit nugget. It's a meaty stick as a tail. It's bench and field treats as ears. And then it is a crunchy as a nose. It's adorable. And then I'm thinking for Boo, I might put a little treat hat on here. I have some Pure Bites, freeze-dried uh, ocean whitefish. Maybe I'll make a little party hat out of that. So this one has like a little square hat on it. Still cute, a little festive party mouse for the cats. They love these.
I'm making some bone broth for the cats. I think it'll be good for Hydrox to have some. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. So what I have here are some marrow bones and I have them in a cast iron skillet and I just put them in the oven. They're actually frozen, they're in my freezer. And I am going to roast these probably around 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer since they're starting frozen. So I'll come back in a little while and we'll check on the bones. This is what the bones look like after they've been roasting in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna take them out now and I'm gonna get my crock pot. I just put the bones and the fat drippings in my crock pot and now I am going to cover this with water. I just added about four quarts of water to the crock pot and I put it on high. And all that white stuff that you see on the top, that is the fat that has solidified uh, because I added cool water. Um, the other ingredient that I'm going to add is about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. What that does is it helps pull minerals out of the bones and into the broth. I just added the vinegar. Now you can use more bones than this. I'm only using four bones because that's what I had in my freezer. If I had a bigger pack of bones, um, I would use more bones. This recipe is very flexible. Basically you just roast whatever bones you have, add them to the crock pot, fill it up with water, add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and then let it cook on high for anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. So what I'm gonna do next is cover this and just put it aside and come back later. There it is, it will sit there and cook while I go about my day and do other things. It's been a few hours now and this is what the bone broth is looking like. It's just now coming up to a simmer. So I'm gonna to continue to cook this. It's about a half hour later and the bone broth has come up to a boil. So I just put it on low and I am gonna to continue to cook this on low. It's now the next morning and the bone broth has been cooking overnight on low. I'm actually going to turn the crock pot off right now. And this is what it looks like inside. It's still simmering away. A lot of the fat has risen to the top. It could be some of the marrow from the bones that is liquefied. So I'm just gonna cover this and let that cool down. And in a few hours, I will then ladle this out into jars. This is what the four bones made, almost four quarts of bone broth. And what I will do with this is put it in the refrigerator and then when I put food together for the cats I'll heat some of this up and I'll put some warm broth in their food and then it heats their food up a little bit and it gives them some extra nutrition and I specifically made this for Hydrox because he could use some extra nutrition in his food right now. I'm making a birthday cake for the cats. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. And this is really simple, it's really quick, it's really easy. And I'm using a can of this wholehearted tuna pate. The cats love this. They get canned fish as a special meal. So uh, this is a special meal, so they're gonna get this. And for frosting or icing, I am using these delectable squeeze up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open this can and I want to take out the cat food and I want to be as careful as I can and try to keep it in one piece. Like this food is a really dense pate so I want to try to keep it together in a cake like shape. And a lot of sometimes if you use a different brand sometimes you could just turn it over and it'll come out. Uh, this does not do that. This is like super dense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife, run it around the edge, and then turn it over and hope it comes out. There we go. The sides are a little bit rough, but we can work with that. There's also like this indentation here on top, so I'm just going to 
I'm gonna scrape off the food that's left. With this food, some of it is left on the cover. I'm just going to scrape it off. Again, this is gonna depend on the food that you open. Um, I'm just gonna kind of make this look more pretty. Now what I want to do is I want to slice this. Imagine this is a cake and I wanna make two layers out of it. So I wanna slice it through the middle this way. I'm actually gonna turn it around. I'm gonna go through this way. It should be easy to cut. I'm just trying to go right through the middle. I'm gonna have to turn it around, do the other side. Okay. And there we have it. These are the two sides of the cake. Again, you can push it down, make it look prettier. Now what I want to do is I want to put icing in the middle. When you have a cake, there's usually icing in the middle of the two layers. So I'm gonna open up one of the squeeze ups and squeeze it in there. This was a little messy because I was trying to watch the camera as well. I'm just gonna spread this around. This is gonna be our frosting inside the layers. Okay. Now I'm gonna put the top layer on the bottom layer. I wanna be really careful. Okay, there's the two layers. So these are the two layers of the cake. I'm gonna add more frosting on top to make the top look prettier. That looks much nicer, doesn't it? And now I am going to get some crunchies, which is dry cat food. I'm gonna take some dry cat food and I'm gonna put some dry cat food all around the edges like you would sprinkles. Okay, I cleaned up a lot of the excess crunchies around the edge, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab a spatula and I want to lift it off of this plate and I want to put it on a birthday plate. Look how cute this cake is. It's absolutely adorable. It's only missing one thing and that is candles. So I have this meaty stick or Webox stick. Um, you get uh, treats like this for cats. I'm actually going to split this into four pieces because I have four cats that are going to be eating this and they're each going to get a candle. Also, Splash and Simba are four years old. So I'm just cutting this into four pieces and now there's four candles on the cake. Look how cute that cake is. I can't stand it, it's so cute. Happy birthday to Splash and Simba. They are four years old and their parents, Stella and Boo, are going to help them celebrate and all of the cats are going to get a piece of this cake. So let's cut the cake. Here we go, I'm gonna to try to cut it evenly. Slice it here. Mm -hmm. Slice it here. 
And let's put this on a plate. Let's get another plate. We'll put this slice of cake on a plate. Oh, I got my finger in it. Look how cute that piece of cake is. Oh my gosh, look. Look how cute that piece of cake is. Look, look how adorable that is. It's so cute. Look around the other side. It's like a cake bakery. It's like a cat cake bakery. Really cute. Got a little messed up, but that's where my finger was, so that's okay. The cats are gonna love this. And here's the rest of the cake. Let's cut another piece for another cat. Cut it right here. And we'll cut one more piece. One piece will stay on this plate with those extra crunchies. I'll actually share some of the extra crunchies with the other plates. Look how cute these pieces of cat cake are. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. The cats all have their pieces of cake. They're all spooked out by something that's going on outside. Stella, you gonna eat your cake? Simba, you gonna eat your cake? Eat your cake. Simba's eating his cake. He chose his piece. Eat your cake, Simba. Mm, Simba loves it. He says, this is so good. Nope, that's your piece. You don't need anyone else's piece. I gotta save these for the body. Here, boo. Who's eating his piece on the stairs? Who's eating his piece of cake? He likes to lick the frosting. All of their favorite treats are in this one piece of cake. Crunchies, a meaty stick, a squeeze up, and tuna. Ooh, don't worry about noises outside. Ooh, Boo loves it. Is Simba done with his already? Oh, he has a little bit left to eat. Happy birthday, Simba. You're four years old. It seems like just yesterday you were a little tiny kitten running around the backyard. Simba says he loves his birthday cake. And Daddy Boo says he loves his cake also. Boo's going to be five years old in a month or two. We don't know the exact birthday of the cats because they're all originally feral cats living in the woods. but I have a good estimation. Look at Simba. He's gonna lick every last little bit of food off that plate. 
It's gonna get the crumbs too. Good job, Simba. Simba really loved it. Stella said she's gonna eat her cake under the kitchen table because she feels safer under here. She says it's so pretty, she doesn't know where to start. She's gonna lick the icing. Happy birthday, Splash. You're four years old. Eat your cake, Splash. Eat your cake. Splash, eat your cake. Eat your cake. You like cake. Okay, so I am experimenting with some cat treat recipes. This is a dehydrator. And here's what I have in it. I had some leftover ground up chicken. And um, these are just some ground up chicken uh, patties. I wanna see how these dehydrate. 
I also then mixed some catnip into the ground chicken. And these are the catnip chicken patties. And then this is cooked chicken. There's a few pieces of cooked chicken here. I want to see how those dehydrate also. So I am going to uh, put this on and I'm going to come back to it later and I'm going to see how this works. And I'm sorry for the noise in the background. The dishwasher is on. This is the Nasco American Harvest Food Dehydrator and Jerky Maker. And part of me is concerned that I'm going to come home later and this thing might be on the floor because the cats might smell the catnip or the chicken and I'm hoping that doesn't happen. So this is the first experiment with the dehydrated chicken cat treats. Um, these are nice and hard right now. They don't really, they don't really have an aroma. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to break one up. They're actually still warm. I'm going to break one up and I'm going to see if the cats might uh, want to try one. Here's the homemade treat. Here. Are they going to eat it? Eat it. It's chicken. It's chicken. It was purring. They're really hard though. Oh, he just ate it. Is he going to eat the other one too? He just ate the other one. Is Stella going to eat it? Fighting over it. Simba got it. Stella's not happy about that. Is Splash going to eat it? And there goes Simba. So Simba really likes these treats. He just ate everybody's treat. Okay, so this piece has dried catnip in it. This is the organic ground chicken with dried catnip in it. Now, I am going to cut this into smaller pieces and then give it to the cats and see if they like this. Do you hear how crunchy that is? Simba ate it. I just gave one to Splash. Let's see if he eats it. I'm trying to block Simba. Eat your eat your treat. Eat your treat, Splash. Eat your treat. Simba wants to eat it. Okay, let's see. Let's see if Stella will like a treat. Eat your treat, Stella. Eat it. Eat your treat, Stella. She's licking it. And Simba's eating it. I'm trying to hold him away. Eat your treat. Eat the treat, Stella. You want another one? Yeah. Yeah, eat it. You can eat them. They're chicken. You like chicken? There's even catnip in them. 
It's chicken and catnip. You're not going to eat them? Simba's going to eat them. I want Splash to eat them, but Simba... Simba's going to eat them all. Yep, Simba ate them. He loves them. I am making super simple birthday cakes for the cats. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. These are going to be little individual birthday cakes. So I have a bag of Stella and Chewy's frozen raw food. This is absolutely rabbit and the cats love uh, rabbit food. I don't make that for them. So the only time they get it is uh, if I buy the commercially made raw food. These are dinner patties. These are round dinner patties. This is actually dog food. Um, I get this at the local pet shop and this dog food is 90% rabbit bone and organs and that's what we want to look for because dogs are omnivores and cats are carnivores so for cats it's very important that they're getting um, a good percentage of actual meat bone and organs. The main difference between dog food and cat food is the amount of produce in the food, um, the amount of non-meat uh, ingredients, and also the amount of taurine. It is essential that cats get taurine in their diets and dogs don't need as much. So the ingredients in this, uh, the first ingredient is rabbit with ground bone, followed by olive oil, rabbit liver, pumpkin seed, organic cranberries, organic spinach, organic broccoli, organic beets, organic carrots, organic squash, organic blueberries, fenugreek seed, and then we go into vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. Once again, I'm using this as a birthday cake for the cat, so this is not something they're eating every day. This is not their main diet. Uh, this is like a special occasion treat for them, and I have discussed this with my vet as far as giving the cats high quality raw dog food. He sees no issue with it because the majority of taurine is lost when you cook meat and when meat is raw, they still get a really great amount of taurine from the meat itself. And again, only 10% of the ingredients in here are the fruits and vegetables that I just read off of the ingredient list. So it's not an issue. With cats, you always want to make sure that the vast majority of their diet is high quality meat, bone, and organs. This is what the patties look like. They have been defrosting for several hours. Boo, this is what I am going to be using as their birthday cakes, but we need to decorate the cakes. This is what one of the patties look like on the plate. The cats are each getting one patty on a small paper plate and Boo has been going crazy. Boo never jumps on tables. He never tries to jump on a table and he's been trying to jump on the table as I'm making these cakes. Calm down, Boo. I'm using a few... Boo. I'm using a few other ingredients to decorate these cakes. So I have a squeeze up here. This is a chicken squeeze up. Doesn't matter what flavor. Then I also have some tasty sticks. These are really like meaty sticks. Um, again, it doesn't matter what flavor. This is what they look like. They kind of look like jerky. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut this up into smaller pieces. And this is going to go on the cake. This will be like candles. And then this is going to be like icing on the cake. Look at this. Look at this. Boo, get off there. Get her off. Okay, so I just opened the squeeze up. Let's see if we could just, just kind of ice the top. Put some on the top like it's icing. I just want it to look cute and festive. Okay, that looks a little bit messy. Let's try it on this one. Maybe we could do a better job on this one. Maybe we could just go around the edge.
Okay, that one looks much nicer. Now, some of these aren't perfectly round because of the way that they uh, were sitting in that little bowl when they were defrosting. If you defrost them nicely, they'll look better. Boo! Okay, Boo's gonna be in his room for a few minutes while we finish making these because he can't wait to eat them. Okay. So there we go. There's the squeeze up. So this squeeze up is like done. So here's the fourth one. This one is actually a tuna squeeze up, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of squeeze ups they are. Cats love squeeze ups. So that's what it looks like, but what would happen if we spread it out? Like what if we spread it out like icing? What do you think? Does that look better? Does it look better if you spread it like icing? Or do you like it just how it looked like when it was... Look at this. Simba! Simba! No, get down. This one's really messy. Let's maybe put some more on here. And then we could ice this like a cake. Okay. That looks cuter. Then this one probably needs some more on it. Okay. Okay, that's cute. Now this is supposed to be just like a really quick and easy cake. Like obviously if you wanted to really zhuzh these up with more decorations, you could. Okay. Now Stella jumped. Stella, get down. The cats are super excited for these birthday cakes. Okay. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll push this one around also. Even though this one kind of looked cute. This one kind of looked cute how it was. I should make these again. Okay. And there we have it. Okay, that's iced. We have icing on everything. So now I'm going to take this. And I am going to actually cut this into four pieces because I'm making four of these and I'm going to put one in the middle like a candle see that's like a little birthday candle they each have birthday candles I am going to decorate these cakes with some of these holistic natural bench and field treats the cats love these these look like little fish so I'm going to use some of these and then I also have some of these wholehearted, savory and tasty soft treats. This is turkey recipe and these look like little chicken legs. They look like little drumsticks. See how cute those are? So I'm going to use some of each. Look how cute this is. So simple, so easy. There's just one other thing I want to put on here because you know, Everyone loves sprinkles, and cats love sprinkles too, but they can't have the same kind of sprinkles that we have, so I'm going to make them some cat sprinkles. So the cats love these Instinct Raw Boost Mixers, and these are freeze-dried uh, raw cat food, and this is what they look like. It's just a piece of freeze-dried food, but you can easily crush it up, and this is like sprinkles for cats. And there we have it. Look, look at this adorable little birthday cake for the cats. This is so healthy for them. It's raw cat food with a squeeze up on top and like a meaty stick as a candle and then some of their favorite treats as decorations 
and then some more freeze-dried raw food as sprinkles. Look how adorable that is. It's so cute. It almost looks like a donut. And here's the other one. And here's the other one. And here's the other one. They look so good. This is like a gourmet cat birthday cake. The cats are eating their cakes on their favorite pizza tray. So it's like a pizza party for cats and they each get their own birthday cake. And today is Boo's birthday and Stella's birthday. And they've both started to eat the candles off their cake. They haven't had a meaty stick in a long time. Splash is licking up the icing. And Simba's going after all the treats on top. Simba's licking up the icing also. Simba's just chomping away at his cake. Now Stella, Stella stole part of Splash's cake. What does she have? She has the candle off of it. She, did she steal his meaty stick? She's stealing more of Splash's? Stella, eat your own cake. Stella, eat your own cake. It's okay, Splash. You could go eat hers. Simba's gonna go eat hers. Simba's almost done with his. Now he's going back to his own. Stella, eat your own. How's Boo doing? Boo's eating his. Nope, Splash is trying to get Boo's. Boo says stay away from his. They're all... Oh, look at that. The Splash just took his piece of cake away from Stella, and Stella's going after it again. And Simba said he's going to go after Stella's. Go back to yours. Stella, eat your own. Eat your own, Stella. Stella's all excited over the birthday party. And it looks like Simba's the first one to finish. There's still a little bit left. The splash is almost done also. And Stella has walked away. Why has Stella walked away from her birthday cake? Well, Simba says he's going to eat it. You're not eating this, Simba. This is for Stella. finished his cake too. So this cake was a hit with all of the boys. He's licking up whatever's left on Simba's plate. And Stella has gone back to eating hers. But it looks like maybe she's just eating the treats off of the top. We'll see what she does. Here comes Boo. Boo says, if you don't eat it, I'm gonna eat it. So I watched the Sushi for Cats video today and it got me thinking, would my cats like sushi? So today on the way home, I bought this package of sushi. This is nigiri sushi, six pieces, three pieces of salmon sushi, and three pieces of tuna sushi. I asked the person who was preparing the sushi 
if they put wasabi on the sushi because some places put wasabi between the rice and the fish. She told me that they didn't. So I bought this. Now the cats are going to try the sushi very similar to how uh, it was prepared in sushi for cats. I'm not getting as fancy as that. So I'm not chopping up all of the fish that's going on top of it. Now, instead of rice, they use chicken. They use like ground up chicken. So I also bought a container of this ground chicken. This is ground organic chicken breast. What I'm going to do is I am going to shape this into sushi rice portions and I'm gonna bake it. And after it's baked, I'm gonna cool it down. Then I'm going to take the sushi fish and put it on top of the chicken rice and we are gonna see if the cats like it. So here is my sushi rice. Uh, it's just chicken shaped into like the rice part of the sushi. I made them a little bit bigger than I want them to be because usually uh, they will shrink in size. I'm gonna put these in the oven um, it's a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna let them cook for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna check on them. Okay, here's the sushi rice that just came out of the oven. It's really chicken. Um, they did not shrink up as much as I thought they would. Um, so I put them on a different pan to cool faster. I don't wanna keep them on a hot pan because they won't cool as fast. Uh, so I'm gonna let them sit out for about 10 minutes um, and then I'll check their coolness and maybe we can assemble the sushi for cats. So this cooled on the counter for about 10 minutes. Then I got a phone call and I put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. So it's really nice and cool now. And uh, let's assemble the sushi. Okay, so here's what I'm doing with the chicken. I'm cutting the edges off so it has this nice sharp edge on each side. I'm then turning it on its side and I'm cutting it into three pieces. I'm discarding the top. And then we have these two bottom pieces because it's just easier for the cats to eat them um, in smaller sections. Then I'm taking the fish from the sushi and I'm putting it on top of the chicken rice. And right here, we have a platter of three pieces of sushi for cats. So here's the platter of sushi for cats. It is a piece of raw salmon on top of a piece of cooked chicken. And this is what they look like. They're not as pretty as the sushi that June's kitchen made, but let's see if the cats like them. Okay, right, let's see if the cats will eat it.
Okay, so they smelled the food. They don't like it. I reassembled the one that Stella took apart. Now I am going to put their raw food on this tray. Let's see if they eat that. So here's their raw food, and I kept the sushi on the plate just in case they still want to try it. Let's see what happens now. And this is what they did. They ate some of the raw food, but they didn't want to touch anything near the sushi. Hey guys, so I am making the cats a birthday cake for their birthday. Uh, Simba and Splash are one year old, Stella's two years old. And while we had a people cake to celebrate yesterday, today I'm making the cats their very own cake that they can eat. So what I'm using is this mini springform pan. I'm using some wax paper that has been cut to fit the pan. I'm using some of this uh, dry cat food. Um, I'm basically using it for the color. Um, I'm going to blend this into like a cat food flour, which I am then going to mix with their wet food. And the wet food and the cat food flour is going to make kind of like the layers of the cake. Then here I have another uh, kind of their dry food that they like to eat. So I'm going to crush these up and these are going to be the filling in between the cake. If you've ever had like a Carvel ice cream cake, you know how it has like the chocolate crunchies inside. So these are going to be like the chocolate crunchies. Uh, then I have this Sheba uh, white fish and tuna entree pate. Uh, this is potentially going to be the icing. Maybe with some egg white, maybe not. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, but this just gives you a basic idea of what I'll be using to make this birthday cake for the cats. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to take this little spring form pan and I want to take this round circle of wax paper and I want to put it in the bottom. I just want to make sure that I could get the cake out of this little pan without it sticking to the bottom and all the sides. So then I am going to take this strip of wax paper and I am going to line the sides of this pan with the wax paper. Again, it is just to try to get this cake out of here as easily as possible. So this will be the mold for our cake. So the next thing we want to do is I want to put together the um, layers of cake themselves. So I said I'm going to be using these crunchies which I'm going to grind into like a flour and I'm going to use this which is their favorite uh, wet food. So I'm going to put these into my little bullet blender and I'm just going to blend these into a flour. Okay, so here's what the dry cat food looks like after it has been uh, pretty much just pulverized. Um, so now I am going to add it uh, to my bowl and I am going to add the wet food and we are going to combine this and use this as a cake. Now, the reason why I want to add the cat food flour to uh, the wet food is to give it a thicker texture and to help bind it together. It's kind of like the same reason a lot of people add breadcrumbs uh, to their meatloaf. It just makes it a little more cakey. Uh, for the cats. And again, this is raw food that I'm using here, but you could probably use, I think, any of your cat's favorite uh, wet food. Okay, so this is all blended in, and I did not measure any of this. Uh, for their wet food, it's usually around a cup and a quarter or a cup and a half of those 
uh, wet nuggets that you saw. And then I would say maybe I used like a half cup of the, um, the dry cat food. So I am going to take this and let's start assembling our first uh, layer in here. Again, I'm not really measuring anything. I'm just kind of eyeballing it all. Then we're going to press this down. I might just have to press it down with my hands because it is kind of sticky. I want to try to make it smooth. Um, that way the filling will just look nicer if it's like a smooth layer. Now, honestly, I don't even know if these layers are going to come out even because I really didn't. I should have just like measured like half of the food. I should have just totally measured this in half. I just kind of like eyeballed what I dumped in there. So I'll just put a little bit more in. One layer might be thicker than the other, but you'll get the idea, right? Okay, so there's the first layer of cat food. I'm going to wash my hands. Okay, so now here is the dry cat food that I want to use for inside. Uh, this is the Nature's Variety Instinct cat food. Um, I believe it's the rabbit flavor. It's the really dark ones. So what I'm going to do is I want to crush these up so they look kind of like, like crush cookies. Um, so I'm going to take these and I am going to put these in a Ziploc bag and then I'm just going to take like a meat pounder and crush these up because I do want like crushed chunks. Okay, these are a lot harder to crush than like cookies. I think this will be good enough. I hope it's not too fine. Okay, so here's what the crunchies look like. So let's take our cake and then let's sprinkle these around like, like the inside layer of a cake. Now some of these did not get crushed. Some got crushed more than others. It's not exactly even, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I hope the cats eat this cake, because sometimes they only like their, uh, their raw, and since I'm mixing so much crunchies in, I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to spread around this layer, maybe pack it down a little bit. I think it's probably a good idea to pack it down. Okay. Okay, so that's the middle layer. It does kind of look like chocolate crunchies in this little cake. So now let's put the top layer of uh, cake on here. I hope I have enough remaining. And then let's just pack this down. Okay, if you ask me, I did not leave enough for the top layer. I could barely cover uh, the chocolate crunchies layer. So I am going to defrost some more of this raw food. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. I am going to defrost some more of their raw food. And... Um, once that's defrosted, we'll finish making the next layer on here. I should have split it evenly, but I didn't. So uh, let me defrost more food. Okay, it is now about, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours later. Uh, this is the chilled cake, and I just made some more of kind of the layers. Um, this is their uh, raw wet food and I ground up more of the dry food and I added it to this. Now I'm hoping it's a match for uh, the rest of the layers in here, um, but we'll see. This will add a little more uh, width to 
that top layer. So hopefully the top layer will be more even with the bottom layer. Again, I've never made this. Um, I'm not using a recipe. I'm just kind of like making this up as I go along. So you're going to see it for the first time here in this video uh, for the same time at the same time that I see it. I really have no idea how this is going to uh, come out. So I'm just going to pat all this down, make it nice and even. Now, the reason why I uh, want to chill this is because it should cut into slices better um, when it's chilled than versus um, when it's room temperature. Um, and that's what I'd like to do. I would like to cut it into like cake slices for them. Um, just because I think that would be like really cute versus like one whole cake. Um, so this addition of more food uh, worked well. Um, we're exactly up to the top uh, of this little cake pan. So I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator and now let's work on the icing. Okay, now for the icing, I just put some egg whites in a glass bowl and I'm going to beat these. Okay, so these egg whites have been beaten and they're uh, nice and light and fluffy and we're going to use these to ice the cake. Okay, so here's the cake. I just took it out of the refrigerator. Um, the top is firmed up a bit. So let's open the springform pan and this should basically just pop right out from the bottom like that. And because we put the wax paper on the bottom, the cake should come off really easily like that. So here's a happy birthday plate. What I want to do is I want to take the wax paper off of the bottom. There we go. Let's put this on the plate. And then let's take the wax paper away from the edges. Kind of looks like a hamburger, right? And this is what it looks like from the side. So now let's put this together and let's ice the cake. Now, originally I was going to flavor this icing with um, that white fish, Shiva. But I know that if I add fat to the beaten egg whites, uh, they will collapse, so I'm not going to do that because I don't want them to collapse. Now, I did not add any sugar to these egg whites. Um, these are just plain egg whites. Normally, when you make uh, egg white icing for, like, people cake, uh, you do add sugar to the egg whites. Um, but since this is for cats, it's just going to be plain, straight egg whites. Now, if you've never made uh, egg white frosting for cakes, uh, the name of it is 7-Minute Frosting. So if you're curious about it, you can always just Google 7-Minute Frosting and uh, learn more. Or 7-Minute Icing, same thing. Okay, and there we have it, a beautiful birthday cake for the cats. It is 100% edible by the cats. It's only made out of wet cat food, dry cat food, and egg wipes.
So what I want to do now is I want to cut this into three pieces and I want to put this on plates for them. Let's see if we can get this to cut. So I want to cut it into three pieces. So I'll cut one here. Oh, it's, it's pretty firm, which is good. I do see some of it starting to like break out. Okay, there's one cut. Then I want I want to make like three even cuts. So let me see if I could just something like that, right? Okay, I'll make one here. A cut here. I'll make a cut here. And that'll be three cuts. So the question is, do I cut these in half? And do I make six cuts? Hmm. Yeah, I think six is cuter, right? Okay, so here we go. We have two pieces for each cat. And that's what the cat cake looks like. It would look more even as far as the layers if I would have just, you know, split the layers in half. Um, this is the first time I ever made it. This was the first time I ever came up with the recipe. Um, so for now, like you live and learn, right? So if you guys make it, I would suggest um, splitting the layers evenly in half. So I'll, I'll give them one piece on its side, one piece I'll stand up, and here's what I'm going to do. So that's a really cute plate of cake for the cats, right? So I'm going to take one of these meaty sticks and I'm going to cut it into three. And instead of giving them a candle, I am going to put a meaty stick in it. How adorable is that? So let me make two more plates and then we'll give this to the cats and see if they'll eat it. So here's the second plate of cake. Okay, so here are the three plates of birthday cake for the cats. They look so cute and adorable, I can't stand it. So what I did with the Sheba is I mixed it all together and I did like they do on those chef shows, you know, where they make like a sauce and then they like wipe the sauce on the plate. Mine doesn't look as good as the chefs uh, do, but uh, you get the idea. There it is on the plate. And there's this one, and there's this one. They almost look too good to be cat food, to be honest with you.
Samba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. I am going to be making some turkey bone soup for the cats. What I have here is the leftover turkey carcass from Thanksgiving. So the drumsticks were removed, the wings were removed, and we took as much meat off of the bones as we could. There's still a little bit of meat on this carcass. Now this was a small turkey. This was only about 10 pounds. It doesn't matter what size turkey you use. You could use any size turkey that you have. So on Thanksgiving, after everything was carved and cleaned off the carcass, I put it into a, I think it's a two gallon Ziploc bag. It's bigger than a gallon bag. It's like a two gallon bag. And then I kept it in the fridge for two days. And today I am going to be cooking with it. Here's the turkey carcass in my largest soup pot. It's actually a little bit too large for the pot. I thought because it was a small turkey it would fit, but no such luck. So I am now going to have to cut this up into smaller pieces. Here's what it looks like after it's been cut in half. I know it's not very pretty, but it's gonna make a really delicious bowl of soup. Now it fits nicely in the pot, so all I have to do is fill this up with water and we're ready to go. Now because I'm making this for the cats, I will not be adding any other ingredients. I'm not adding any carrots or celery or onions or anything like that. If you're making this for yourself or for people, you can add anything that you want. But because I'm making this for cats, I'm leaving it very plain. Also, when I roasted the turkey, um, I roasted it very plain. The only thing that I seasoned it with was some rosemary on top. And it was the most juicy and delicious turkey we've ever had on Thanksgiving. It was so good. We think maybe because it was a smaller turkey, it was a younger bird, and it was just really, really good. So if you used a lot of garlic and onions and seasonings on your turkey, you probably don't wanna use the bones to make soup for cats. It'd be fine for soup for humans, but for cats, you wanna be careful with the ingredients that you use. I added about six quarts of water. It doesn't matter how much water you add, just fill up your pot to within an inch or two of the top. I filled it up uh, to about an inch of the top because I'm not gonna cover this and I know some of the water will be evaporating off of it. I am now going to turn this on high and bring this to a boil. It's a little while later and everything has just come up to a boil. I'm probably gonna skim off all that scum that you see on top, like all that frothy stuff. And then I'm gonna lower the heat down to a simmer and I'm gonna simmer it for over an hour. Here's what it looks like after the top was skimmed and the heat has been lowered and it's just gonna simmer for an hour and then we'll check on it. The soup has been cooking for an hour now and it smells so good. I wish you could smell it. And I would say about an inch of water has evaporated off of the pot. So I might put a little bit more water in and top it off, but I will continue to let this simmer for another hour. If you want, you could also add some lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. And what that does is it helps to pull the minerals from the bones into the broth. This is what the soup looks like when it's done. So this has been cooking for a little bit more than two hours. You could cook it longer than that if you'd like to. You could cook it for four hours, six hours, eight hours. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just cooking it for two hours and I'm gonna let it cool down and then I'll put it in some mason jars. I'll probably see if there's any meat that I could pick off the bones, maybe give that to the cats. Boo's been really enjoying uh, cooked turkey lately, so um, that's new for him. He never used to like that before. So this is how the soup looks after it's been cooking for about two hours. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrells video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.